Um, so I've just cooked the blood from the deer liver that I processed and dried earlier. It was left over from the frozen liver when I thawed it. It was just kind of in the freezer bag. And so I mixed it with a little bit of salt and put it in a hot pan. And the liquid blood coagulates as soon as it hits the hot pan. And it's, it's almost like a crepe texture. It's kind of light like that and kind of almost eggy, only it's gonna be a way richer flavor. And the organ blood is gonna taste a little bit like organs. Blood just from the animal is gonna taste um, a little bit irony almost, like, like a little bit like rusty water. And then blood also tends to be salty, but it's good with a little extra salt. It's a hard flavor to describe. It's kind of meaty, but it's also kind of its own thing. And the texture is really different. Um, so when I'm butchering an animal, I often do kill them a, like a larger animal, like a goat or a sheep or a deer. I'm gonna, like a deer if it was dropped but not killed by an arrow or a bullet, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna cut the throat. So just plunge a plunge cut where you plunge the knife in right behind the esophagus and then bring it out. That way you're gonna cut both of the, of the arteries right here. Um, and then you can just slide a bowl under the neck. Uh, if I'm butchering a smaller animal like a rabbit or a chicken, I often kill them by breaking the neck. But then to collect the blood, then you're going to cut it while the heart is still beating and it's the same cut, but now on a dead animal and again collect it with a bowl. And you have two options for collecting blood. You can either just let it go into the bowl and let it coagulate on its own, which it's naturally going to do within five to ten minutes, <clears throat> which it's naturally going to do within five to ten minutes of getting into the bowl, just the natural clotting agents that help stop bleeding when the animal's alive. They do the same thing when it's dead, and they set it up into this kind of jello-like, tofu-like consistency. And from there, you can slice it and fry it, or you can dry it like that. That's how I've dried blood before. Or if you want the blood to stay liquid, you can beat it with a whisk or a fork or a spoon as that period, that first like 10 minutes are happening, and that's gonna keep it liquid. And then you can use it for blood pudding. You can do like I did, where it just spreads out in a hot pan and it's gonna get kind of crepe-like. You can pour it into the lungs of the animal and it'll fill all of the air space and then you can bake or saute that and then you can slice it. And that's a great way to eat both lungs and blood because it gives it more of a, a set consistency. You can add that to stir fries, you can flavor it. Some people call it blood bread or it's similar to blood pudding. So there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, I usually just let the blood coagulate because it's really important for me to be present with the animal while it's dying and to, and to really help it cross over in a good way. To me, the taking of a life is a really sacred, magical, important act and it's a big responsibility. So it feels off to me to be whisking the animal's blood while it's dying. That feels disrespectful. So I usually just let it coagulate. But something that I do like to do is I've got my bowl ready that I know I'm gonna be collecting the blood in. So I like to put a little bit of salt and a little bit of herbs in there. And then as the blood is coming in, I just give it a little swish to mix it up a little bit, not taking a lot of time and doing it real intentionally, but just so that it's already a little bit flavored. And that way when it sets up, it's already gonna be delicious. Um, so that's, that's what I tend to do with blood, and I usually use it right away. If it's a larger animal, then it can be a lot, and that would be a good time to dry the blood for adding to soups and stews and what have you later to add protein and nutrient content. But it's also just wonderful, just fresh, right out of the pan, a little fat, a little salt and pepper, maybe some onions and garlic, whatever you've got on hand. And it's really wonderful, so good for you, and a nice little treat you can make with a resource that a lot of people just let go to waste. But animal blood is so rich, and I just feel like it's super easy to digest and just like turns into blood in your body right away, and you're that much more strong and vital. And it's one more way to bring some of that vitality of the wild into your life. And I'm always all about whatever I can do to both honor the animals that give so much to us and bring more wild into my life and you are what you eat. So eating the blood of wild animals, what an amazing thing, what an amazing resource and what a way to honor them. 
So, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Um, bon appetit. I totally just dropped a little whack of blood onto the kitchen floor. I don't know if that was obvious, but it's kind of silly to pretend like it didn't happen when I've got a camera pointed at me, so. Oops.